It's Monday, August 19th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, James the Just, Part 5, The Downward Spiral of Sin. And our scripture is James, Chapter 1. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you're being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation is the seed of sin, and Satan plants it. We can't control the thoughts that enter our minds. However, as Martin Luther pointed out, though we can't prevent the birds from circling over us, we can stop them from nesting in our hair. Satan may plant the seed as a temptation. Growing it to a bumper crop is our fault. There is a direction that temptation takes to become sin. Now, there are dozens of examples in the Bible of this pathway. However, David's sin with Bathsheba is striking. Let's use that as our roadmap to compare it with what James is teaching us about the way sin defeats believers. First of all, there's desire, James 1.14. Temptation comes from our own desires which entice us and drag us away. King David in 2 Samuel chapter 11 saw Bathsheba, a very beautiful but married woman. God created desire in us. It's necessary that we be interested in the opposite sex if our species is to continue. However, just like fire, which is a good thing, if you handle it in a way God didn't intend, you'll suffer the consequences. Someone once said that lust is what develops with a second look. So first is desire. And then second is decision, James 1.15. These desires give birth to sinful actions. Once the decision is made in the heart to abandon what's known to be right, that which is approved by God, the line is crossed between Satan's work and our receiving sin into our lives. David saw Bathsheba, and it was only a temptation. The minute he began inquiring about her and wanting her, knowing that she was married and therefore outside of God's approval, the desire was intensified to lust. There's a play on words in this verse, in verse 13. Desires is like the cravings of a pregnant woman. They're exceedingly strong, as any husband and father who's ever made a 2 a.m. trip to Walmart for pickles can tell you. A woman great with child can exert great control over a man of average intelligence and reasoning. It's that way with our God-given desires. If Satan places a temptation before you, something outside of God's approval, and when you stay, lingering, wondering, the lure has a hook attached, and you're very close to being reeled in. The hand's disobedience is only a thought removed from the heart's disobeying. So there's desire, and then decision, and then disobedience, which is sinful actions. The word in this text for giving birth is actually a military word. It means to take prisoner. The long look created lust. The lust carries you away and you become its prisoner. Satan's work is successful that way. He handed off the temptation, you accepted it, and now you're running down the field. Annie was our American pit bulldog lab mix. She was only about 65 pounds, but when the bulldog mentality in her took over, she had the strength of Samson. Our daughter Carrie and her husband Shannon had a young Rottweiler named Magnum who outweighed Annie by a ton and a half. Once, when Elizabeth and I stayed at their apartment to dog sit, I was told to walk the dogs. Well, just like an unsuspecting child, I accepted the leash from that temptress I've lived with for over 50 years. So bulldog and bad dog in tow, I never saw that lady coming, the one with the two huskies, the one Annie really didn't like. Magnum decided to join Annie's attitude, and when they took off after them, I was dragged along like a sack of dirty laundry. I couldn't have held them back with a brigade of stormtroopers. Now, the analogy is pretty clear. The leash was offered to me, 
and I accepted it. But once I had the leash, it was mine, or so I thought. <laughs> Sin is always like that. You start off thinking, man, this is great. I'm going to... And then the hook sets, and you get dragged along, and you get reeled in and scaled and cooked. First a desire, then comes decision, then comes the disobedient act, and then comes, according to James, death. Verse 15, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. It's the payoff. The payoff for King David's sexual affair was the blowing apart of his family and the kingdom God entrusted to his leadership erupted in civil war. The leash led him to places he never intended to go. And we don't have a leg to stand on either. The devil suggests sin. He cannot make us sin. That is our choice. For you today, James has the last word, the message New Testament. Sin grows up to adulthood and becomes a real killer. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.